What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Tina Amini. Hello, everybody. Justin Davis. Scoop. And Sam Claiborne. Hey, everybody. And we have a great show for you this week. We're going to talk about um, some uh, recent games that we've been playing. Watch Dogs Legion, Spider-Man, Miles Morales. But first, this is the final episode uh, of this console generation. The next uh, next time we t- we meet, uh, we will be in a new console generation. To that end, we've got an email from Alexander who says, it is time to pick the game of the generation. Now, I don't think we're going oh, to boy. pick it. We're not going to pick it within the next hour, but let's get that conversation started. Alexander says, we've reached the end of a generation. Today's show marks the final game scoop of the current generation of gaming. I keep a running list of all the games I complete with my personal rating. I'm primarily an Xbox gamer, and I've completed around 75 games this generation. Some of my favorite games on the Xbox One include Sunset Overdrive, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Hellblade, Doom, and Doom Eternal, Shadow of Mordor and War, Gears 5, and Quantum Break and Control. I also enjoyed several several smaller titles like Axiom Verge, Child of Light, Cuphead, Guacamelee, Hollow Knight, Hyperlight Drifter, Ori and the Blind Forest, and Will of the Wisps. My question for the Omega Cops is, what are some of your favorite games or series from this generation? I'm happy to say I made it through an entire console generation listening to this show, and I'm looking forward to some next-gen episodes of GameScoop. Thanks so much for taking the time to read this. Alex from Connecticut. So what what are the rules of the generation, Damon? Uh, the rules, well, uh, you know, uh, games that were released this generation, and I do think we, we need to include the Switch in there. Mm-hmm. But what it's about more of like, this uh, generation than Wii U, right? Yeah, but I thought, like, is there anything that was only released on Wii U that, that you know... Just that you know. Wind Waker remake is pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty great. Are you- uh well you got nes remix um i guess yeah. it came out on 3ds what about uh gta 5 i think that's a last gen game well, yeah it's also a next it's also a next gen game <laughs> yeah it's, 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 it's crazy like, gen game yeah totally uh the last generation this gen the, the generation we're about to talk about skipped elder scrolls and gta and those are still the biggest games yeah, yeah that's really funny um, and of course, we have to acknowledge there's still some really big games of this generation still forthcoming: Cyberpunk, Assassin's Creed, Valhalla. Um, even the like four spot. years of Switch games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but we're just talking about you know games that we that are already out at at this point. Uh, one just a few days before the switch over to the next generation. And I thought it'd be easier to um, separate them by genres, just like uh, IGN does with its best of awards. Excellent. So if we started with action games, mm-hmm. action game of the generation, uh, for my money, I think the best action games I played were all 2D games this generation. And that comes mm-hmm. with the caveat that I'm not really like a platinum games guy or a Devil May Cry guy. But the games and a lot, a lot of these games are the current trend of like indie uh, roguelike games. So like Dead Cells, Spelunky 2, Rogue Legacy, Hades. Uh, I think those are like some of the best action games I played this generation. Would you Anyone count else? Red Dead 2 as an action game? Mm-hmm. I think we'd put that in action, action adventure. adventure. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. going to have to adjust my list here. Dave. The action adventure is the, the biggest category, I think. Yeah, that, that's such a good catch all. Yeah. Yeah. And how about, how about The Last of Us 2? Action Sorry. Adventure. Or rather, The Last yeah. of Us originally. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I think Does that those... mean God of War is also Action yep. Adventure? Yep. And Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. Um, and then I think there's a just an adventure category that folks <laughs> does that, you know, mm-hmm. is just adventuring. So maybe The Witness uh, or um, uh, Untitled Goose Game. Oh, that's sure. a good one. Right. That's a good adventure game. Um, yeah, yeah, again, like we can probably roll past because you, you said all of the uh, the good retro style action games. And I was looking up like our ratings of action games. And my list here is everything is like, you know, an open world adventure game that has action elements to it. Um, yeah. If you if you go down your list of games that has that stuff, though, there's one I'd add. And that's uh, well, I'm sure there's more than this, but uh, anything on Switch, uh, I think, dominated action. So Mario. Mario Odyssey, like, is a clear action platformer, just c- completely best of its class. And then I think this is an action RPG, but the Link's Awakening on Switch is, was incredible, mm-hmm. too. I really like mm-hmm. that. Three I have those on my list, too, but I sort of shoved them in the action yeah. adventure category. And, and like, Zelda's yeah. kind of an RPG a little bit. 
Cool. Like yeah, in a, uh, action like RPG pro- crossover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, would you, you uh, Sam? Would you consider Odyssey, Super Mario Odyssey, a straight action game? Because I feel like there's so much yeah. exploration to it. Yeah, that has more exploration. Like it's more exploration than uh, other games. But like I feel like Mario is like if we if you draw back to the roots of Mario, like that's the original style of action game, right? Because it's that's about true. acrobatics and about movement and yeah. platforming is like almost like a industry term we would use that 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 specifies a type of action game. Yeah. Um. I want to give a shout out to Yakuza Zero, um, hmm. which is a game that is somehow sillier and like more emotionally resonant at the same time than I expected. Like the main storyline is this crazy mafia melodrama, but then everything that surrounds it couldn't possibly be more cartoonish and funny. And just I've never taken like more screenshots and pictures of a game than that hmm. game because of the insanity that surrounds it. And um, that one's like a dark horse candidate for me because as I was playing it. I'm not like, oh my god, this is amazing. This is game of the generation worthy. But like, it's really stuck with me. Like, I come back to that game a lot and think about that game a lot, and it like really looms large in my head. And um, it's just incredible seeing that franchise grow over the years. And um, Damon, I think you would really, really love them. You, you haven't got into the Yakuza games yet, have you? No, and but not for any reason. I, I think yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. I think I probably would like them. You got it. Zero's the place to start. It's also one of the very, very few franchises that ever like the prequel is the right place to start like it doesn't ruin or like spoil the original game so it's like play the prequel it's awesome you can get it for like 10 bucks now yeah i gotta get on that um sticking with action uh i think celeste would be included in there because that one is just oh, pure yeah. platform i never played pure that. platforming yeah i think yoku's island express is a good example of a good 2d fun action game well <laughs> but again the metro genre find me <laughs> the the metroidvania nature of that may make that more of an action adventure game yeah uh yeah. but do, uh, with, there is bloodstained curse of the moon one and two yeah both really and good the, you know 8-bit style linear yeah, castlevania no, games bloodstained it didn't end up too bad either it's just that we deserve we deserve castlevanias yeah exactly uh and then i think i would include uh tina katana zero oh that's right i have that under action adventure <laughs> So well, I just I think that was. I just think we all like a little adventure with our actions. So. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that too. I Plus, agree they, that too. they've molded together quite a bit over the generations, so it's perfectly mm-hmm. topical point for this topic. It's and weird then, that there were no big arcadey games that our staff like all got into, or we all played together yeah. over the past the past seven years. Like, the, there's a Pac Man era we were all playing that together, and Geometry Wars before that. Those Pac Man CE games are like really popular and, and very arcadey action games, but there hasn't been anything like that that's really taken us by storm. I guess there's Smash Brothers, but that's probably, you know, fighting, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and um, then, you uh, know, Damon, you glossed over it right at the start that, you know, this panel doesn't happen to be big fans of Platinum, you know, Climax action style games, but like everyone loved Devil May Cry 5 and like really a culmination of all the um, yeah just experience and um, expertise there really came together with that one that maybe not isn't necessarily our taste, but like I think IGN, our score was crazy high for that game. So in um, the nines, yeah. Yeah, glad to see that 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 the the genre is alive and well. And I hopefully we still have Bayonetta 3 to come. And uh, I think people really liked Astral Chain last year too, which is a uh, Switch exclusive from Platinum. I haven't played it, but everyone seems to really like it. Um, finally, on my short list of action games, I haven't played these, but Justin, I think you have. Would we include like Overcooked? Oh, yeah. as action? Good question. Yeah. My family, my family plays Overcooked together. Yeah. And this is it's I, it's brought out a different side of my six year old, where for the first <laughs> time ever. She, um, her enjoyment out of that game is to try to troll us, and she just mm. laughs and laughs and laughs. And um, she takes, she waits until we have a meal completed, and then she grabs it and then drops it over the edge, <laughs> and so <laughs> we lose the completely com- the finished meal before we can serve it. And then, um, you know, and then we yell at her, and then we don't play the game anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, is Overcooked an action game? Uh, I don't know, man. It's one of the, it's a party game, is what it is. Mm. Yeah, like Fall Guys, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about Fortnite? Or are we going to talk about shooters next? Well, shooters, yeah. Uh, is That is a, a category we were going to talk about, and I thought maybe Fortnite would fall under that, but of course I'm no Fortnite expert myself. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Out of these games, is there, is there a, an action game that seems like a clear front runner to us? Well, we gave one of those games a 10, and it was Celeste, and I didn't play it, so. 
We gave two of those games a 10. Yeah. What Spunky was the other two. One? Spunky oh, two, but Mario. also no one else played that. Again, I think Mario is an action adventure game. I have had I've had Celeste sitting on my Switch unplayed for like 18 months now. And like I know like I love Meat Boy. I know I'm going to love it. I just you know, it's just in the backlog at this point. Yeah. Maybe Christmas uh, break this year. Everyone loves Hades this year and some people are even have it on their game of the year shortlist this year. So I think maybe either Haley, Hades or Dead Cells might get mm-hmm. a pick if if people were voting on action game of the generation today. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, but since everyone really wants to talk about action adventure, yes. sure, let's do that. And that genre, I think, would include uh, both Red Dead 2 and Breath of the Wild and God of War, Witcher 3. Oh, no. It's That's the, an RPG. A, yeah. Straight up RPG. Really? Okay. I mean, this well, it's an action I, RPG. Yeah. That's why it's a little bit tough. I think of, I think of it as an open world game. There's definitely like so since every single game has a skill tree like you know God of War you're getting more powerful you're equipping equipment so why is God of War an action adventure game and yet Witcher Three is an RPG it's just like it's how many stats are in the game at some point it's like you know you know it when you see it and it becomes it's no longer an action adventure it graduates to being an action RPG I think yeah it's definitely well, blurred lines between some of these for sure. Yeah, that's what that song was about. There you go. <laughs> yeah, fun fact. There's a validation. <laughs> um, um, I can go down yeah. my list. Yeah, please. From mm-hmm. 2013, The Last of Us was this generation, right? The original Last of Us. Am I right? No. PS3. No, no it PS3. was PS3. All right, we'll yeah. take that they off the list. It right people. Away. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, I recall that. Okay, so then starting with at least on my list from 2014's Shadow of Mordor, which we mm-hmm. already referenced. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to just comment on that real quick because I, I think that's one of my favorite games of the generation. Looking back on it, I'm so fond of it. I, I love it. Um, and also, it kind of is, it bookends uh, two ends of the generation, which both had good license games. And Jedi Fallen Order was another license mm-hmm. game. Like that's unheard of, right? Last generation we had Batman stuff, which we can talk about. And we had maybe like some entries this generation, but like, those are like, it's really cool to have, you know, a, a licensed game. That's like so good. And man, shadow of mortar. Oh my gosh. That, that was so surprisingly awesome. The orcs are so funny. Yeah. And you, also just kind of a groundbreaking, um, new structure in a genre that yeah, I'm yeah. surprised has not been emulated more often, but it was really, so, mm-hmm. um, ingenious for how they implemented it. Do you still prefer Mordor to war? <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I don't think War did enough to like really, you know, advance it, but I really enjoyed every moment of it. And then also a licensed game, Batman Ark Knight came out in 2015. Mm-hmm. That's the third one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I started skipping them after after uh, City. Um, but Arkham they, Knight they gets a good. bad rap. Yeah, you know, Ark Arkham Knight is, um, you know, maybe it's not quite as good or revelatory as, you know, City or uh, Asylum, but those are two of the greatest games ever made. Like, (laughs) do you have to settle for merely a game that's a 9.5 out of 10 and incredible and like, ooh, there's too many Batmobile sections. It's like, give me a break. Like, the, 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 the combat and the stealth and the puzzles and like... You know, I, Arkham Knight is not my favorite in that trilogy, but upon reflection, I think that game got bagged on too much and kind of yeah. unfairly. It had a lot to live up to, but it was the only one that came out this generation, so we must count mm-hmm. it, obviously, just to have obviously. the reputation it's also, there. <laughs> it's still so gorgeous. Like it, That game also doesn't get yeah. enough credit for what it was doing visually that early in the generation. Yep. Uh, what, what else, Tina? Uh, 2016, Dishonored 2. Mm-hmm. I had that. That's yeah. another one of those where like Dishonored One would have been included, but that came out previous generations. So you know the house, yeah. the house puzzle level is just one of that the coolest so cool, designed right? levels ever. Yeah. yeah. Continuing on, sort of thematically, Inside 2016. Mm-hmm. I was hoping you were going to mention. I was hoping you were going to mention Inside. Yeah, I think that totally falls into this category. Uh, same yeah. year, Oxen Free. Yeah, mm. I like Oxen Free. Yeah, I never played that one. You still need to. Justin, you've played it, right? Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. It is a 7 out of 10 good for me. Mm-hmm. You walk, you walk, you just, my memory of that game is walking very slowly. <laughs> do you, think, I like do you the, guys think, um, go ahead. I, 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 like, I like all the dialogue, I, you know, as other people have pointed out, it actually feels like teens walking around and hanging out in a way that other games just don't get it right, that just feels hokey. Um, so 
you know, yeah, super enjoyable, but, um, you know, it was three hours and it was over and I liked it. That's, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> it was a good playing game for me. Um, yeah. Do you guys think that uh, Inside is more of a role-playing game? <laughs> what? The end. Is yeah. <laughs> R-O-L-L. Yeah. yeah. Role-playing. Pretty good. Um, but, but although it sounds like Oxen Free is more of an adventure game. Mm-hmm. That's true. It probably could have uh, counted in its own category. And we need but I threw it in there because I Let's lost it. Let's remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of categories that we didn't really outline specifically, so they could just be shoved into the other places that are appropriate. Yeah. What else? Continuing on. Uh, you guys already mentioned Breath of the Wild. I put it in my action adventure category. Um, that's yeah. 2017. Also Super Mario Odyssey, same year. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, our our reader right in also mentioned Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, but it mm-hmm. needed to be said again. And then personally for me, I skipped all the way to Mario Tennis Aces, which I understand is a sports game. Wow. But at the same time, we don't really have a sports or I guess we weren't intending on this show to talk yeah. about a sports category. And I loved that game. Wow, so I had no I had idea to put it there. Yeah, it was very um, the moves were very specific. And once you got really trained in it. Um, it it uh, became like a really comp- a really interesting complex battle system, practically. So I like that. Wow. Um, keep going. Oh yeah, yeah, keep going. Red Dead Two, which we already said. Of course. Spider Man on PS4. Oh yeah, Spider Man. That's another licensed game that, yep. that turned out great. Yep. Yeah, we had a few of those um, this generation. Uh, God of War, of course, um, and then going into 2019, Control. Mm-hmm. Jedi Fallen Order. Yep. Um, I put Katana Zero on this list. That was also 2019. Link's Awakening and Outer Wilds. Oh yeah, oh, Outer Wilds. I, I, yeah. I never played that one. Outer Worlds later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Outer, Worlds. Outer Wilds. God, that game was incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just glossed over some of the best games of the <laughs> last decade. <laughs> just rambled them um, off. <laughs> You know, we take for granted now because Spider-Man is made by Insomniac, you know, and had a big first party backing behind it. Like, of course it was great. But, you know, Sam, like you touched on earlier, like didn't used to be that way. Like Spider-Man games used to be made by Activision. Actually, some of them were pretty good, too. They were not like these really bad licensed games. But like that being an incredible game, like, like genre defining experience is like not to be taken for granted. Like Insomniac absolutely hit a home run with that. And it was bizarre that it was a Sony exclusive. Like that was such a twist when they were like, oh, Spider-Man's a Sony exclusive mascot game for us now. Yeah. We're going to launch our new system with Spider-Man. Like that, that's such a big twist in the console wars. It's done them they well. Got that spi- it's mm-hmm. got that Spider-Man font. Yep. That's true. <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> that's true. Um, so Sam, I mean, like I, it's got to be Breath of the Wild for you, right? Yeah, for sure. And I wanted to mention that um, I uh, there was like series that really took off during this generation, including Tomb Raider and Assassin's Creed. And like those are things that have existed for previous generations. But like I think the best Assassin's Creed came out this generation and the best uh, Tomb Raider did, too. Um, so I really like those series now and I'll always play them. And I, I think Uncharted stayed really good, too. I liked Uncharted 4 a lot. Um, oh, yeah. Breath of the Wild. Yeah, yeah. Breath of the Wild, like I'm again, I'm playing it right now. And I and so uh, I I kept on hearing from people like oh it's so great to go back to and play in different ways and so I'm really happy they updated it with master mode for me to go back and play mm-hmm. and uh, I think I'm gonna beat it probably this week and be ready to play all the fall games after that. Tina, would you go with Red Dead Two though? Yeah, you know me. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just kind of the no-brainer one. I'm curious, like, why that one over Breath of the Wild? Um, I really, I think it's, it's well known, but like, I really hate the weapon breaking system and it kind of, mm. um, disrupts my gameplay experience. I know that it actually adds value to, for other people because it's a matter of, you know, how much of your commitment you have to a certain weapon and understanding its limitations or whatever else. Maybe there's an element of realism to it, whatever. It just, to me, it feels mm. like, like an encumbrance to my having fun in the game. And I love when you stumble on a favorite weapon and you just use that forever like that's kind of like been my borderland style for instance mm-hmm. um which i did not include on this list but yeah with yeah. red dead 2 it just it f- felt like that filled in world um with a lot of interesting character dynamics and like a great story to carry you through from beginning to end so it's just the, the perfect combination of stuff that i like in a game i would like to yeah. add that the weapon system is actually my least favorite part about breath of the wild and it drives me crazy and i obsess over it and so like right now my inventory is like you know, a perfect selection of unbroken soldier swords because I always use the worst stuff. 
you know, yeah. first. And then yeah. like I save these like handy weapons and now I have the master sword, which doesn't break. Uh, it just loses power for like four minutes, like a mobile game, which sucks even more. <laughs> <laughs> but then I just end up using that and I don't fight until I have it back. Like it's, it doesn't work with my particular like collector nature in that game. So that it does drive me crazy. I do think that was a very common complaint with breath of the wild. So it'll be interesting to see if they keep that for breath of the wild too. Yeah. I mean, Thank honestly, you. just tweaking the durability would go so far. Like if I had a, my favorite weapon for 75% of the game and then I lost it, that'd be a good story beat, right? Like that'd be kind of fun. And like, I could really like manage that. But yeah, like th- like you're in the middle of a fight all the time and it's like your weapon's about to break. It's broken. Yeah, and the more you want to explore, the more that you're potentially also in combat. So it's like, are you getting penalized for exploring, essentially? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, th- I think like if there's a pacing out of, all right, you know, your, your weapon breaks at a point of time, but you happen to hit a part of the um, a part of the single the, like single player campaign where you can actually find an even better weapon. Then it, the trade off at least makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think maybe Red Dead's equivalent is the looting system being so cumbersome too. Uh, mm. and slow and, and that's kind of inhibiting to the experience as well yeah all those little realism elements i think that was the common complaint about yeah you, you're too. meaning like the, the drawer opening stuff or yeah, yeah yeah it takes so long and then you're you know the first few times you loot a body and you're like this is really cool and detailed yeah, animation yeah and you're like ruffling through their pockets but then yeah. afterwards you're like all right i get the point like you know how to do animation well let's yeah. move on yeah <laughs> yeah yeah red dead's probably you know, it's it's might be the best story I've ever experienced in a game for sure. Oh yeah. For sure. Red Dead 2. Yeah. And then Sam, you said we saw we got the best Tomb Raider this generation. I assume you're uh, referring to Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yeah. Yeah. I think, well, Not you know Shadow. What? I kind of go back and forth. I think the first Tomb Raider maybe is my favorite now that I think about it, but I like the recent, I like the recent two a lot. Yeah. I like the, yeah. Uh, uh, the both first one was last gen. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's why I yeah. can't include it. But I, uh, and then as I mentioned, like, yeah, I think, like Assassin's Creed has only gotten better, which is really cool. That was unexpected. Adding RPG stuff to it. The best beaches I've ever seen in a game were in uh, Odyssey. Yeah, man. Odyssey is an absolutely beautiful game. Yeah. Uh, so, Justin, anything uh, on your end that you think we're, we're missing? My game of the generation and one of my favorite games of all time is uh, Zelda. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. We don't we need to relitigate the uh, the uh, weapon breaking system, except to say that I disagree vehemently. Um, you but like you know, I I don't like it, but it's there for a purpose. Like you would cheese mm-hmm. the whole sixty hour game if you know the player would be their own worst enemy. They'd find you know they'd find some cheesy laser sword, and then they would just use that. And like, <laughs> oh, that like defeats you could the purpose. go get like a good weapon. Well, yeah, they'd have to control that system, right? Um, so, but, so, but the one we haven't really talked about, you know, yet is God of War, which, Mm. uh, like, it's unbelievable to me. And that's another game that, like, dude, like, it didn't have to be this way. (laughs) Like, Spider-Man, like, you know, it's reinventing this old franchise that was like, you know, they, they, they never got bad, but like, they were getting kind of tired. Right. And like, redefining, like, they were so smart about like, do God of War games have to have a fixed camera angle? You know, do they have to have the Blades of Chaos? Like, does the camera, you know, or can the camera be behind the back? Like, like the the brave the um, what's the word I'm looking for? I can, bravery, courage. <laughs> like <laughs> courage. There it is. Courage. Yeah. Um, the courage that they had to like drop away or just get rid of like no 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 no. like god of war doesn't need to be that like this is really the core of what's important to this franchise and um and then layering on top of it an actual meaningful story with pathos a father and son story um man i it's so incredible and um i am absolutely going to replay that game on my ps5 before ragnarok comes Mm -hmm. out Oh yeah, for sure. It's also that game's also like big. Like, um, it just goes on for a long time and has a lot of different areas. And um, it, it was it was way more game than I expected. Yeah. Um, it really opens up. Kind of, uh, uh, really opens up. Has a lot was, of exploration. You know, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And it was more puzzly than I expected. Um, yeah. What a game. Yeah. That's probably my favorite PS. For game of the generation, like exclusive, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's you know, even this year, there's a couple this year, like Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Ghost. Tsushima. Yeah. Like, those are both also really good. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that they 
I know I know Last of Us Part Two was a little controversial, but I've also heard a lot of people say it's you know the best game they've played this generation. Mm-hmm. And then Tsushima is easily one of the best open world games I played this generation. Um, there's maybe a couple things of you know I we're not really the show to speak to these sorts of things, but Bloodborne, uh, Dark Souls Three, mm-hmm. you know, obviously those are yeah fan favorites. That's like a genre that that is this generation. Like yeah, there was a yeah. Demon Souls on on the on PS3, but like man, like the Dark Souls likes blew up this generation. Like I'll always associate the PS4 with everything Bloodborne, Dark Souls, and of course yeah. the other ninja stuff like Neo and stuff like that. Like what? Sekiro. And I'm familiar with those games from strategy guides more than anything. Like people really, those are hard games and like people really need help with them. And so that, that was like a really fun thing to, to, to everywhere. Everybody's having discussions about how difficult these games were. Like, I think that's a really healthy part of the industry to still have really hard games. Yeah. Um, near automata would probably be in there too. Although that's not another one that I, I haven't played. Yeah. I call it an RPG. Um, you think that one's more of an RPG? Yeah, that's that's the category I would put it in. I'm just going um, by the box. We didn't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't. It, it doesn't quite make my game of the generation list, but you know, Horizon Zero Dawn has got to be up there. Yeah, I thought about that one, um, and I, I enjoyed that game a lot. But like, there's no way I like it, you know, as much as Breath of the Wild or even Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Tsushima for, just for me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's another one I got like halfway through it and then, you know, fell off. And then I saw some of the end game stuff and some of the DLC stuff and got jealous that I never got to that portion <laughs> of the game. I was like, ooh, that does look really good. Yeah. A couple of mentions. There's Hollow Knight. I know it's super popular. For, you know, it's supposed to be a, a, one of the favorite Metroidvania games of the generation. Although mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, the art style doesn't really do it for me. So I actually haven't played that one. Although it's on I PS Plus this month, so I have no excuse. I can't believe I forgot about Hollow Knight. Man, yeah, you're gonna love it. Play it, Damon. Oh man, All you right. gotta play it. And let me know what you think. It has that it, kind of like cra- Castle Crashers look. You don't like that kind of style? Is that what you don't like? Yeah, although I like Castle Crashers more than mm-hmm. Hollow, Knight, Hollow Knight's art style. I, I mean, uh, you know, you, I mean, you, you know me. You know, I would much rather le- have like a pixel art. Yeah, game. yeah, yeah. I hear you. Uh, but speaking of Metrovanias, there's Ori one and two also. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would throw in, you know, I, I do think it's up there. I think Steamroll Dig two. Uh, yeah, me too. It's definitely, I mean, it's definitely one of the best Metroidvanias I've played of the generation. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, th- I, I do think that it would come down to Breath of the Wild, uh, Red Dead Two, Front Runner. Oh, Sam, we didn't even mention Metal Gear Solid Five. I know. That, that, yeah. That's like I know that's like a, a game that we like a lot. Yeah. Uh, uh, I kind of want to play that game again. I wish it was in Switch. Um. Are we ready for me to uh, inform you guys about what we rated as the worst games of the generation for the action adventure category? Because I Wait. had our games database team pull them for us. Oh, wow. Yes. Please. Yes. And we know these games, too, because, you know, we, we we review games that we think are relevant, right? We don't just review everything. So I was going down this list and I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh, OK. So because this category is combined, we have some actions and some action adventures and some action platformers in here. All right, some of them I don't know, some of them I do. First of all, we got Double Dragon 4. Give yeah, that 3.5. Bad. bad. Did you do that, Damon? No, but I played it on a live stream. It's bad. All right. We gave a game called Waking a 2. Waking? <laughs> waking. I don't know I about that one. Waking. Uh, we gave Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition a 3. Mm-hmm. It's pretty bad. Uh, we gave Decay of Logos, which I remember that coming out, which is an action adventure game, a 4.5. And then uh, there's a few others here, but I'll skip to the chase. We gave Godzilla. A oh, yeah. What it was, was that? really bad. It was really bad. It was a PS4 exclusive. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that. And there's there's also a funny one here. There's just a Legend of Korra game. We gave a 4.2 to. Hmm. Whoops. I think that was Platinum. Ooh, I hope I'm not wrong about that. But there's like these two Platinums, right? Like the one that makes the really, really oh, incredible yeah. action games and the other Platinum that it's like there's TMNT. Uh, and stuff like that. I'm gonna, and then the, I'm gonna I'm gonna look that up now, but I let me let me double check. Do you guys remember Devil's Third? Yeah. Oh, it's um, it's the former uh, uh, the former like Dead or Alive guy, Itagaki. Yeah. Itagaki. We gave, that, right? we gave that a three point five. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. And then Legend, uh, of, Legend of Korra was platinum. I know we're not going to go into full adventures, but we gave an Adventure Time game, uh, uh, the dungeon because I don't know three point five. And we Aww. gave uh, Leisure Suit Larry Reloaded a 4.1. So. 
There you they're, go. They're still making new Leisure, Leisure Suit Larry games. I know. Anyway, crazy. I'll check back on you guys for uh, for future categories. Okay. There's some funny ones in here. Uh, we mentioned for our adventure category, uh, maybe Goose Game, The Witness. Although uh, you know, it could also be a puzzle game. I don't know if there's enough pu- games to have a puzzle category. Uh, mm. But there's also uh, Return of the Obra Dinn, which I actually haven't played. I, but yeah, I think Obra you- Dinn's so good. Yeah. I forgot about that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for the yeah. puzzle game, we liked briefly in the office this game where it was about um, where you'd stack up Tetris blocks, but then they could fall over. Yeah. It yes. was like on towers. And yeah, then, but- um, then there's the Voltron game also, which, which uh, Tina and I played a little bit of, which, which was really fun. Which is really A good. Voltron game? Mm-hmm. Wait, really? Like Voltron, Voltron? A licensed game? Licensed game. But, um, didn't you play it? So you have like different cubes with different abilities and you stack them to kind of, it's like a tower defense crossover t- kind of title. I think it was one of the games that we lured you over to our desk to play and we kept putting a controller in your hand, but you just like couldn't focus. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I, it was a Danny game though. I have no memory of that. I remember playing <laughs> um, uh, that game. The, game, the platformer from yeah, the, uh, the Castle Crash. The Explode Yourself one. The Explode one. Castle Crash. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, Tina, yeah. what's the name of that game? Um, Battle Block Theater? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. That's Which true. Which is the That's hardest the 20 questions we've ever had. <laughs> we um if we're if we're like shoving puzzle games into this category we got to talk about tetris effect which is like a purely yeah. a, a emotional like game to brain connection that's like just unbelievable um it, it took like it, it's like if Luminous took the like just sort of block puzzle game crown from tetris effect or from tetris then tetris effect took it back for the next generation for sure Oh, we forgot a game uh, for the action category. It, it probably probably would be the front runner, and that's Ding Dong XL. Yep, sure. I've never yeah. heard of that game. <laughs> Put that on the short list. Uh, we're running a little bit long on time. I figured I knew okay. this could easily eat up a whole episode. In the strategy and tactics category, you'd have stuff like Civilization VI. But then, Justin, I wonder if this is the place that something like Hearthstone goes. Yes. Yeah. What about and also? Breach? People yep. like that. Into the Breach, I loved. Slay the Spire, I would go in there. Um, and I think even something like Super Hot would mm, go into that category. Interesting. Yeah. Super was fun. Hot. Basically good, a turn based shooter. Game. I love mm-hmm. Super Hot. Yeah, Super Hot VR is a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. Into the Breach is great. Um, and I think. Mario plus Rabbids. I was just going to say Mario plus okay. Rabbids. I read oh, your mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> would fall into that category. That was uh, a really fun game. Mm-hmm. And then I guess RPG would include The Witcher 3. And then. Mm-hmm. Justin, would you agree both final, two Final Fantasies could be in this category? N- no, I wouldn't. I, I love 15. I love it, yeah. but I recognize it as not. It's, I'm in too much of a minority opinion to like even try to make a case for it. But um, you got to talk about, I would say, Final Fantasy 14. Certainly. Yeah. Oh, yeah God, that's, that's this gen? Well, you know, it's an MMO. It's a, it's yeah, a live game. It's kind of ongoing. So yeah. Hard to say. Um, oh, and then, uh, well, but wait, what was the other one you were talking about? <laughs> seven, seven remake. Oh, no. Final Fantasy seven remake. No, I don't think so. Mm. I do. I think that, that might be the best JRPG of the generation. Oh, no. What, Persona what came up? out this generation. <laughs> what about Persona 5? You, you guys know I don't like Persona. I think it's I fucking know. creepy. Yeah, but it is super popular. Yeah, it's we're really like. popular. Yeah. Um, there's a Divinity. There's two Divinity Original Sin games we got this yeah. generation. Wow. And. and I can't wait. Like, I wish those were on a, a, a system I could play. Well, uh, I know they're, they're, on, to, uh, they're on Switch. Oh, yeah. They find, I, was, I was saying that because I didn't know if the second one had been ported yet, but it is now. Well, the first one is at least. I don't know if the second okay. one is on Switch yet. but um, I uh, uh, wanted to mention that I think most people uh, uh, on our staff and then out there would be surprised or very, very not surprised for me to say this, but I think uh, Undertale might be remembered as the most important RPG of this generation. It was like the biggest culturally impactful, uh, weird indie RPG that came out of nowhere. And it's just, it's huge with kids. Like it's so big. It just went everywhere. The music, the the characters, like it's just so popular. It's I remember great, it being, hey, I haven't played it. I haven't played it myself. I remember it being, popular in certain circles when it came out, but I don't have insight into any yeah. sort of like cultural impact that it has. It's crazy. Well, it's definitely become this sort of, 
memeable game that has a life outside of the gameplay experience. But I did play it, and I played it when it was new, before that sort of cult of personality had built up around it. And like, it stands on its own two legs. It's like, you fun. don't need to engage. You don't need exactly. It's super yeah. fun, and the battle system is like really innovative and surprising, and the writing is so. Um, uh, referential and like spot on. Um, you know, I sometimes I think the the community around the game kind of does it a disservice. Where like it's taken on a life of its own. Where like if you just download that, install it, and play it as a video game, it's just excellent and deserving of all the praise it gets. Yeah. And then I was gonna call out uh, Pokemon had huge hits this generation hmm. that uh, I, I liked. Hmm, I'm trying to think of which one I liked the best. Um, I think the, the, you know, I, I liked, uh, I think it was sun moon that was set in Hawaii, which is really cool. It had like Alola, which is like a Hawaii, uh, you know, a like, and it was really, really cool. I liked that. And then uh, it was pretty good. But then I, where do I fit in Stardew Valley? Because I was going like to ask about that. I was going to ask you're role playing, right? But it's a kind of a strategy role playing game. Like I love that game. And then you have to ask where animal crossing goes, but, but I think Stardew is like one of my favorite games I've played in, in a decade. I love that game. They're, yeah, they're, we, it's just chillax games. <laughs> but there's also some dungeon crawling in in uh, yeah, Stardew true. Valley, that's which is why true. I thought yeah. maybe an action, maybe action adventure mm-hmm. for that game. I don't know. I mean, they're, they're s- simulation games is the answer for Stardew and Animal yeah, Crossing. And Animal but, Crossing. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a couple other JRPGs worth mentioning. I think Octopath Traveler uh, turned out really well. Had, it certainly has a very very cool art style, and I liked the mechanic of uh, the eight be different a quarter as long as it is. Yeah, well, it is very. Right. I played, I love. So, so quadrupath traveler, yes, yes. or <laughs> maybe that duopath. Would be half. duopath. Yeah, uh, I know people love Dragon Quest Eleven, although I haven't played it myself. Yeah, uh, yeah, I forgot about that too. Oh, I I, if, I, if, I, more. if I had two lives to live, I would just have a parallel life where I played that Dragon Quest game. <laughs> I don't have the eighty hours. I wish I did. I'm sure it's lovely. Dragon yeah. Quest somehow manages, they pull a magic trick on everybody where they come out infrequently enough that they can just keep releasing the same game. Time has passed and everybody loves it, including me. Yep. Um, same. It doesn't do anything new at all, but it just <laughs> executes on that classic vision to such a high degree of precision and excellence that like nobody cares. They're just, they're able to get away with it. Like by the time drag, the next one comes out, like everyone's going to be like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll murder some slimes again. <laughs> and then finally for RPGs, Justin, would you include a uh, pillars of eternity? Yeah. Two of those uh, too. Well, it, to my shame, I never got around to two. I, I loved one and um, you know, two, its reputation is it's one of those games that builds on and improves on one, but is much less popular than one. And so then it becomes a little bit hard to speak to, um, but I didn't get around to it myself. All right, I'll quickly read the worst RPGs, and you guys just let me know if you recognize any of these, because I don't recognize any of them, okay? Wait, did we say Outer Worlds? Did we mention Oh, yeah, them? you were waiting on Outer Worlds. Sorry, Tina, go for yeah. it. Oh, no, that's it. I just wanted to make sure we covered our bases there. You, I, I like that. that game surprisingly more than I was expecting to. Yeah, I came pretty close to beating it, but then I dropped it, which I felt bad about. But I really did like it. The AI com- ship computer is a great character. Mm-hmm. I I really liked Outer Worlds, um, but I actually, in 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 contrast to Octopath Traveler, I wish Outer Worlds was quite a bit longer. I, I could have used a lot more time in that I, game. And the, the, the we ending, had Fallout, right? That came out this generation. There's Fallout Four, but I don't. I mean, I, I don't Just know. Didn't I, stick with me. I think the audience has kind of been split in Fallout. Yeah. Oh yeah. We also it's not a JRPG, but IGN Game of the Year Dragon Dragon uh, Age Inquisition. Oh yeah. Yep. I forgot about um, that. One. That game is really good and I don't understand like people have kind of turned on it and like the popular consensus is like Witcher 3 has sort of like eclipsed it, but um I don't know. I have nothing bad to say about Inquisition. I think the hate that that game gets is completely unjustified and unfair. It's a lot of game. It's a lot of dialogue. <laughs> yeah, the dialogue's great. Yeah, and then um, of course Mass Effect uh, skipped this generation in the sense that the only game well, that came out this generation is bad, which yeah. is so sad. So what's going to happen to Mass Effect? I, well, let me. I have a quick rant here too. Halo cool. and Mass Effect don't have good games this generation. That's crazy. They have games, but they don't have like this. Like I look forward to every Halo so much. I'm so excited for the next Halo each time. And like, man, Five was just not that fun. It's really disappointing. Well, when when Infinite finally arrives, it will still be this gen. I know. Yeah. I know. Um, okay, here's the RPGs. You ready? We got Legends of Dawn. Got 2.8. Nope. nope. Natural Doctrine, 2.8. I remember hearing that name, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't either. Uh, Underworld Ascendant, 3. 
Oh yeah. Based on uh, the movies Underworld? Oh maybe. No, uh, um, the the dungeon crawling RPG. I think it was kickstarted. You know, like a mm-hmm. revival of the classic games. City of Brass. <laughs> Give that a four. <laughs> and then finally, Left Alive, three point eight. Oh, that's the Square Enix one, right? What is it? Is that the one I'm thinking of? Maybe I maybe know. I'm thinking of the wrong game. I don't know. It, it makes me think of Disaster Day of Crisis. Remember that Switch game that never came out? Or I mean the Wii game that never came out here? Anyway, those are the worst RPGs we, we scored. So if you played any of those, let us know what you thought. <laughs> uh, you know, we're not really the group to speak to fighting games. There's Smash Brothers, and I know, like, uh, I, I actually really liked uh, what I played of Mortal Kombat 11, and I think people like Tekken 7, but, you know, I don't, I don't know how, how deep we can really get into a fighting game discussion. Yeah. So let's go straight to Shooter. Mm-hmm. which, you know, you've got Overwatch, you've got Fortnite, uh, Titanfall 2 in there. There's Wolfenstein 2 is the one from this generation. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, we talked about this before, and we didn't say that Hero Shooter started this generation, but boy, they took off, and so did yeah. uh, and so did uh, Battle Royale. So, like, Battle the, those are, like, you know, the themes of this generation, too. Mm-hmm. Actually, count kind of Halo, the Master Chief Collection. That's a good Halo package of games. <laughs> That's that a really good package generation. of games. Yeah. It's a technicality, yeah. but, you know, we'll take it. Yeah, um, I mean, there's... yeah, like dollar for dollar, it's the greatest like single collection of video games in one whatever distinct package, if you want to call it that, and for my money. Um, with this generation, people really uh, factioned off with uh, shooters. You know, you, you you play Fortnite or you play PUBG in one era. You, you play Destiny or you play Call of Duty. You know, there's the, the things have gotten really, really uh, uh like factional and like a lot of people don't cross over through those games they just kind of stick with them that's where games of service started and stuff like that and i think that's kind of like clamped down on like the kind of creative you know cerebral shooter as they used to call the half-life era games and stuff like that we still have wolfenstein but like Mm -hmm. i can't think of any other games that are like that it's like tell a story and be a good shooter doom i like titanfall Titanfall 2 prey is a really good point i I kept on seeing that in lists and i only played a little bit of prey but that's a really good example because that's that that bioshock like thinking shooter right yeah a little bit with with some like dead spacey vibes to it um Mm -hmm. the i didn't like it by the end it felt like a cheap ending but otherwise i I liked a lot of the um Mm -hmm. the world and story building what happens in the end well, no, no. <laughs> it's a 2017 game. We're not on the, um, you know, fine. we're not at that juncture yet. No, oh, man. Um, you know, we you mentioned Overwatch at the start. Like, I played that game every single night for months, and that's probably the last multiplayer game that, like, that that I did that with. And like that feeling of it managed to suck me back in, you know, in a Halo like way where like that just becomes your routine. Like the kids go to bed now, like boot up Overwatch. Like it 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 um uh, and like just the as you said, Team Fortress 2 is really the game that popularized uh character classes, but the democratization of like the shooter where like whatever kind of role you want to play and whatever your skill cap is, like there's a role that you can contribute to your team in a meaningful way um, and switch it around to keep it fresh. Like it, it's, it's incredible. Um, and it's easy to f- kind of forget that because the game has been around quite a while now. And like, you know, I'm not playing Overwatch anymore, but like the time that I spent with it was like such fond memories. And then I guess um, Half-Life Alex would probably go in this category. Although, you know, yeah, I want to uh, play it. Yeah. <laughs> none of us uh, have gotten a chance to play it, but here only incredible things about that game yep um so really quick uh I, i'd, I'd want to know like what you th- what what you think you're like your personal game of the generation would be as of right now and sam i assume you would say breath of the wild i already said it was yoku's island express <laughs> <laughs> uh and, and tina do you think red dead 2 is your overall personal game of the generation at this point i think so witcher 3 is a big contender too um but i think red dead beats it out for me yeah, I like that one a lot. Justin, how about you? Mine is Breath of the Wild, but I don't think Switch games count. We're only talking about this because the PS4 and Xbox have successors coming out, and Nintendo doesn't. So yeah, I think true. that they're, they're they're slipping in here on a technicality. Yeah, in this time frame, Breath of the Wild is the most incredible game I've played. Out of those two console libraries, um, it would be God of War for me. Yep. Yeah, and if I had to go with PS4, Xbox, I'd go with Red Dead for sure. Interesting. Yeah, definitely, you know, Breath of the Wild for me, God of War on PS4, but then 
Hearthstone, man. Uh, six years now. Six years of playing that game every single day of my life. So that's Is that the one with the magical cards? Yep, they're magical cards. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Uh, a question to you all. Was this generation of gaming better than the last? Mm. No. Hmm. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, two Batman's last generation. Yeah, so. exactly. It's just <laughs> math. It's math. <laughs> there no, I mean, are two Portal Two. Those will always be some yeah. of my favorite games of all time. Red Dead One. Like the it, yeah. the GTA's were were good for some people that generation. Skyrim. I mean, those are all from the last generation. Bioshock games, all that stuff. Yeah, just just better games. Yeah, there are, right. there, are there are a million exceptions. There are a million exceptions that sort of prove the rule. Games that came out this generation that really did, you know, evolve and press the medium of video games forward. You know, games like Undertale and Outer Wilds and The Witness and, and sort of challenge people's idea about what a game can be or what a AAA game can be. But generally speaking, you know, Breath of the Wild, I'd put in that category too. But speaking broadly, I think this generation was just kind of a continuation of last generation you know we're on the sixth gears of war game now and you know a rebooted god of war and uh and uh games feel more conventional and safe now Mm -hmm. than i think that they did last gen um Mm -hmm. and again there are a lot of exceptions to that i'm just sort of painting with a broad brush right now if you were to look at like the best of lists for each console i think that they're less varied than they used to be Hmm. it's interesting yeah, I think volume wise, last generation for sure, because you do have like the Mass Effects and the Halos that were better that generation that we just kind of skipped yeah. over. And I think mm-hmm. Dragon Age was better last gen also. Mm-hmm. Well, and like and we, I think with Sam Uncharted, you- which is really cool. I mean, three three Uncharted games from the last generation were great. And Last of Us One was better than two. So what? And, oh, yeah. you know, you have yeah. yeah. Sorry, you're right. You're right. <laughs> thought she, you thought you she stuff said like, Uncharted? You have stuff like yeah, I thought she said Uncharted. <laughs> <laughs> it takes forever just v- making a video game a triple a game is so hard now that they just they hardly come out anymore and like you know we're still waiting on an elder scrolls game and we're gonna well, be for another decade like it well, yeah, feels bad it is crazy and i know that you know a lot of you know i i, I had 53 games that i at least wanted to mention and of, of course it's very reflective of my taste think of how many of them were like smaller indie games yeah. you know mm-hmm. Um, because there's so many of those, so many more of those now. Because just as Justin said, but AAA the last gaming. generation had your your uh, Bionic Commando rearmed and yep. Braid and yeah. Geometry Wars and Pac Man CE. There's that's when of that course yeah. that is when that started. But now it's exploded, and there's yeah. just so much. You know, there's so many more of those coming out all the time. While there are fewer big AAA games coming out all the time. So if you say if you're into like, shooters and social playing, this is the best time to live ever, though. That's not even comparable to the last generation. Yeah. And then if you like Nintendo, the last two generations of Nintendo, including Wii U, sucked. The yep. Wii and the Wii U suck. I, I totally like games agree. in the systems, but it was terrible being a Nintendo fan in that time. As soon as we got a year with Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey, I was like, oh, yeah, this is the Nintendo I know. I and couldn't it's agree more. It's been so much better. Yep, I was going to point that out. Thanks to the rise of digital distribution and, you know, Steam was around last gen, but like it's mm-hmm. only become more dominant in PC gaming and has only experienced more of a resurgence since like games like Factorio, which I think I'm a hundred hours into, like could not have existed before. Like they can only exist and thrive in the context of like gaming in 2020 or contemporary gaming. Um, so, you know, there's so many bright spots, especially if you have weird esoteric tastes like I kind of do. Like, there's a lot of AAA games where I'm just like, I'm not not that interested in this. But, like, there is something crazy and cool and exciting to play every single week now. Like, if you, you only like roguelike card games, you know, you're, there's you're 10 still of them covered. now every yeah. year. And, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and whatever you're into, there's something out there for you now. So, um, you know, w- when I talk about maybe overall this generation, I'm not quite as impressed as last. I'm mainly talking about sort of mainstream game lineups. Okay, now that we've officially determined Game of the Generation. Uh, last week, Tina, Tina was telling us she was playing Watch Dogs Legion. Uh, have you continued playing it, Tina? I have not. I swapped over to Miles Morales. Okay. We'll talk about Miles Morales in just a second. I just want to say I have also been playing Watch Dogs Legion, and I don't like it. <laughs> not, in, I don't think I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna continue on with it. Uh, I think it's a. I think it's an ugly game. 
uh, especially because, you know, it's a AAA game from Ubisoft coming out at the tail end of a generation where mm -hmm. two years ago they gave us Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which was absolutely breathtaking. I think Legion is ugly. I think all the characters in it are ugly. Uh, just whoever their like art director was for that game, man, I'm not into their style. And I think all the characters are really annoying as well. And like, like you get people saying, I, I finished a mission and when I got back to like our headquarters, uh, one of my you know fellow DeadSec members said, that's Brill. Mm. Like, <laughs> like they shortened Brilliant and I cringe, I don't know, I can't remember a time I cringed harder than that. I also just don't care about the whole premise, this like, we're this like, this rebel organization that's going to help the people of London rise up against this evil corporation. But then when we get in a car to drive to our next mission, we're going to run over literally 10 people on our <laughs> way there. And there are no repercussions. <laughs> anyway, Watch Dogs Legion, not a Damien game. Confirm. Well, if you run over people and there's cops around in typical, you know, open world fashion, they'll come for you. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear, I want to hear more about games Damon doesn't like. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. There's, there's like, it's it, it was an issue I had with um, Watch Dogs Two as well. There's like it's it's too ridiculous to say like I'm I'm just a normal person capable of mass murder. You know, like you recruit someone to your team and they're like a school teacher, and like they're they're instantly ready to infiltrate a base and just mow down anyone that comes in their way. It's like it doesn't it just mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah, work. I assume there was like a story explanation coming around that. Like there's some sort of in your brain code yeah, that gets unlocked. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's also, you have to perform a side quest to recruit everyone, and I feel like that's something Ubisoft wasn't transparent about this whole time. They were like, <laughs> you can play as any NPC oh. if you complete a side quest first. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but Tina, how is Spider-Man Miles Morales? I loved it. It was, um, I actually finished it. Um, it's a pretty short game, as you can expect, just given the whole weirdness around is it a standalone is it an expansion or whatever else mm -hmm. um it is technically a standalone um but it is a pretty short experience which to a degree i actually really love because you can finish it in like a day um depending on how much actual actual investment you put into it but it's it's more spider-man um but with different characters and miles morales himself is like super charming and has that kind of peter parker vibe to him where he's mm -hmm. like a huge nerd and he says kind of like teenagery dorky things in response to to when he's saving people and whatnot it's very charming and enjoyable um it was a good way to spend election day do his uh superpowers feel like they're different than spider-man's superpowers like does it feel like similar enough but also like i'm it's its own thing to play oh it's very different and then they, the oh, way that different. you yeah the way you incorporate it in combat too is like certain mm -hmm. enemies are more susceptible to it so it's kind of like elemental damage essentially oh, okay. which is a fairly you know translatable universally translatable feature mm -hmm. plus nice. there's a um the, the costumes are amazing and i was actually really motivated to unlock every single one of them um and it's not my favorite but once you get offered the bodega cat suit like obviously you can only wear that anymore because obviously. yeah like you swing around and this cat just comes out and like licks its face occasionally Amazing. you're flipping around the cat's just like stretching out it's very cute <laughs> so did you beat it in one day um i beat it in like a day and a half right. um, I, I did a lot yeah you definitely could have because i i wanted to spend time doing some side quests and you have an app where you can pull up um, like people, the citizens request your assistance. So you can pull up your app and check locations for side quests. And mm -hmm. the collectibles are really easy to get through um, as are some of the combat upgrades and whatnot when you go through those challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. And they also award you, a lot of those award you activity points, which you can use on your suit um, and your gadgets and upgrading that stuff. So it, it's definitely good about motivating you to do all of its gameplay features. Hmm. Uh, oh, cool. I did not love the end barrage of fights leading up to a boss battle. And obviously I won't say more than that, but it, I personally felt like it was a little infuriating. That sounds like the end of Final Fantasy VII. That's true. It's just uh, it's one of those classic, like, throw the kitchen sink at you deals. Yeah. And that's kind of how you um, interpret challenge in a game. And Sam, you said you played a demo of something? Yeah, I played the Hyrule Warriors demo. Speaking of throwing lots of enemies at you, that's that Hold entire on. game. <laughs> you broke up a little there for me. You're doing the Hyrule Warriors. What is it? Curse. Of, what is it? What is it? It's title? called Hyrule Warriors uh, Age of Calamity. 
Age of Calamity, sorry. Yeah, so it's okay. set in the Breath of the Wild universe, and it's 100 years before, and so you actually dip right in in the demo. It starts from the beginning, and you're like, you know, Zelda and Link and everybody are at their normal, you know, selves, and that the, the team that you assemble in ghost form in Breath of the Wild is, like, alive. And so you're, you're like, talking to them and stuff like that. But it's really good. Um, I, I, I didn't like it at first because it, it remaps all of your controls from Breath of the Wild to, like, you know, whatever Muso series controls, which is so stupid because you're doing the same things. You're like throwing bombs and that's not me crying, by the way, that's somebody <laughs> else. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it's like, so that was frustrating even because you're playing as link and I'm, I'm playing breath of the wild right now. So I'm like, I'm everything's the same and all the controls are different, but you know, you get used to it. And like those games are really silly. They're like, go here and kill a bunch of enemies and just build up your meters for like five different special attacks. Like that's it. But this has a little bit of crafting and collecting and you're like working on weapons between levels and stuff like that. And then there's just the charm of Zelda over it. It's beautiful cell shaded mm -hmm. look. It like, it looks like super polished, you know, all those designs are in there. And then it takes place in like areas of high Hy Hyrule, which are like geographically, you know, interesting to look at because it's not ruined yet. Like everything's like a little village or whatever where you saw ruins before. So like, you know, as somebody who like Breath of the Wild is like, is my favorite game ever now. Like it's just like digging into the lore of it. And I, I was actually talking to Tina about this earlier. Like I would, for the games I like the best, like I'll play a spinoff of those games just to like see more of them in any way. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Like it's fine. You know, like it, it, like uh, this game, it, it, it this by nature of it being a spinoff, like I went through a four player terrible metroid prime game because <laughs> i love metroid prime i just like i, I like i played the whole game by myself four player which federation is like the force. dumbest thing federation force yeah so like yeah i'll do it and like but this is not like that so far it's been really fun and i can't wait to play more there's one cool. more thing i need to say about miles morales yes and uh it's it's sort it's a small detail but it's kind of infuriating like you you get on a computer and hack often um and he'll be sitting there typing for you like oh, i can't get in oh no what's this and you like they're showing you the screen and it's literally one static image the whole time and as he's typing furiously there's like no text box no change in anything so it's there's one scene where they actually do like one more major cutscene where they actually animate that screen, but otherwise it's just a static image and it's kind of like, uh, do you guys know this is happening? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to patch that in. That's the day one patch. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Justin, I know you've been a little busy. Yeah, I did play. I played through uh, Pikmin 3. Um, oh, cool. And, and loved it. You know, I'm mad at Nintendo for charging $60 for that game. I think it's bullshit. But, you know, I wanted to have it on my Switch. And that was the choice that I made as a consumer was to rebuy it. Um, did you guys play No, I didn't. And I should have. And that game I, I is so good. You know, it takes the best parts of Pikmin 1 and 2. Um, mm -hmm. Just so charming and clever. And there's nothing else like it on the market. Uh, but that's my complaint. It's like I, I played through that game on the Wii U, and I did not remember it being this short. That game's like three and a half hours long, and I'm not even really? exaggerating. Like I, I don't well, remember that either. I beat it. I beat it in 16 days, and the days are 14 minutes long. So yeah, yeah. three four hours. Huh. Um, and uh, you know, I wasn't trying to speed run it. I'm just sort of doing my thing. And so that was disappointing, and that the price makes that kind of doubly disappointing. But um, yeah. I still have the DLC to go through and the other missions to go through, and um, it's a great little just appetizer for um, you know, for just the deluge of uh, amazing AAA games we're about to get. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna start uh, my playthrough of one of those amazing AAA games. Hopefully, amazing AAA games this evening. Really? And that lucky. And that brings us to video game 20 questions. The final video game 20 questions of this generation. Our suggestion this week comes from Allison, who says, in all honesty, I'm not a gamer, but I listen alongside my boyfriend whenever we're in the car and he gets so excited for the 20 questions segment. Oh, great. So thanks. Do we have the boyfriend's name? No. Mr. Allison. <laughs> um, thanks for that. Um, we Let should, the um, questioning begin. Is we this can't from this use our cheat. Why not? Because we listed so many games. <laughs> but it's perfect. But we, we can just say, yeah. is this from this generation? Yeah, that was yeah. going to be my first question, too. Go for it. Yeah. Is this from this generation? No. Damon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we know not to use the cheat, right? Not for, not for a little bit, at least. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been more disappointed by an answer to one of Damon's questions. But for, to be fair, Damon, no, he did select it. Never mind. He gets to see the inbox. He has control. 
Um, yes. Is it from the previous generation? Your, is it from the 360 PS3? Yeah. No. You do the math in your head. Is it from the previous, previous generation? No. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Is this from is before it... 1990? Yes. Okay. Did this game, um, was this game originally released on the NES? No. That's five. Was this an arcade game? Yes. Ooh. Was this game ported to the NES? Yes. Okay, I feel bad for phrasing it the way I did now, but we got there. <laughs> did did this game use a joystick to control it? Uh, no. <laughs> Marble Madness. <laughs> um, no, no, almost no, no Atari games use joysticks except for Dig Dug. So, yeah. Well, I I'm thinking about arcade cabinets. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. They, go. joysticks were not as popular as 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 they seem to be these days. That's why people can't make multi cabinets. They're like, well. I can't put Centipede or Missile Command or, you know, Star Wars or Tron in my cabinet. Um, is this a, what did you ask? Oh, if yeah. it's a license game. Is this a license game? No. Mm. Um, is this from before the arcade crash in 1983? No. That's 10. Whoa. Late 80s okay. game or mid 80s game. But not a joystick game. Hmm. Um, are we gonna get? Aren't we gonna get there if we know the control input method? Yeah, so, I'm thinking it's Paperboy, but we can, we can keep going here. I um, was gonna ask if it was a. Did they? They had light gun games by then, right? Like early shooting games, shooting gallery that, games. Not that got ported to NES. Oh, good point. Did we attend a lecture on this Could've game? Been that. Yeah, it's good. Has this been a GDC? What is it called? Yeah, a GDC lecture. Yes. Well, what? Wait, wait, what did you answer? My question or Sam's question? No, her, your question, Tina. You asked what? a separate question, which is incredibly wide. Hmm. Like GDC, I'm sure, has hosted lots of retro panels. So which one were you answering, Damon? Can you re repeat the questions? Mine was, did we attend a panel on this game together? And, and Sam's was? Did GDC host a panel about this game? The answer to both like, questions probably. is... The answer to both questions is yes. Okay, so then it's paper point. Yeah, go for it, Tina. What's your game? What? How, okay, is it Wait. paper boy? Yes, it is paper boy. Nice. <laughs> you know, from that lecture, we saw they did a cool thing where they laid out the whole street for paper boy yeah. in pieces of paper that were like drawn out yeah. and designed in this quad, like in Atari's like office complex outside during the day, and they had pictures of it, and they just kind of pieced the whole the streets together that way. The house Man. of the bike, the house of the Grim Reaper, the house of the gravestone. The gravestones. I loved Paperboy on the NES growing up. There's, there's yeah. the construction site you drive through, and then the weird. It just gets so weird at the end. <laughs> it makes no yeah. sense. There's like a BMX course at the at the end of each yeah. level. It's really fun. Going through the hoops. Yeah, it hit arcades in '85, but I think a lot of people played it on NES, and it was ported to just everything at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and the arcade game has a, an actual a bike handlebar set. With yeah. the the rubber handlebars that have like the little ridges on them, you can like scratch. I don't know if you guys remember those, but they they're just like a perfect handlebar set. And you yeah. just control it like that. It's good music, medium res model, cool. fun game, Atari. Um, I wonder what they could do with that today. A new with Paperboy. Paper Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a Paperboy two that was on all the consoles, and it was yeah. uh, I played it on Super Nintendo, and like you know it was like totally fun, and just had like a different set of of silly houses to go by yeah uh well thank you for the suggestion allison uh viewers listeners if you have your own 20 questions suggestions send them to me at uh the email address gamescoop at ign.com i've just been delivered a uh, delicious looking plate of apples and peanut butter Ooh. that i'm going to enjoy as a little snack post scoop little are, you post sure scoop are you sure that's not for kingo yeah <laughs> kingo's not even here he's at the playground oh wow yeah, Good for me dad snack uh yeah, dad's dad snack. Snack uh, scoop. Snack scoop. When next we meet, it will be a new generation of consoles. Uh, so everyone who uh, pre-ordered an Xbox Series or a PS5, I hope they arrive to you safely next week. And uh, there will be a lot to talk about next week. Uh, but that's going to do it for us. That's all the scoops we have for you this week. Thank you to Tina. Thank you to Justin. Sam, thank you to Borba working behind the scenes. My name is Damon. This is IGN Game Scoop. And we're out.